Welcome to the Fall Protection Forum. My name is Kevin Dennis and today's topic is energy absorbing lanyards. Next to full body harnesses, energy absorbing lanyards are the most commonly used item of fall protection equipment. Their use is pretty straightforward. One end of the lanyard connects to the dorsal D-ring of the worker's full body harness and the other end connects to a predetermined anchor point. If the worker should fall, they're going to fall a distance equivalent to the length of slack in the lanyard, lanyard becomes taut, shock absorber deploys, and the fall is arrested. Now although their use is pretty straightforward, oftentimes the challenge is selecting the right lanyard, the right energy absorber with the right connector and in the right style. So what I want to do today is walk you through the two basic types of energy absorbers that are available and the two basic styles of lanyards that are available and some of the issues that they all have. In 2009, as part of the Fall Protection Code, ANSI released Z359.13. This is the ANSI standard that relates to energy absorbers and energy absorbing lanyards. Within that standard, there's two classifications of energy absorbers, 6-foot FF energy absorbers and 12-foot FF energy absorbers. Both energy absorbers have a capacity of a fully tooled and clothed worker of 130 to 310 pounds. Now their names are meant to be a little bit descriptive, with 6 foot FF energy absorbers being able to, to withstand a 6 foot free fall, and then obviously 12 foot FF energy absorbers able to withstand a 12 foot free fall. One of the easiest ways to tell which energy absorber you have is to take a look at the label. The ANSI standard requires that all manufacturers have the exact same label for size, color and fonts on all Z359.13 energy absorbers. So 6 foot FF energy absorbers have a white background with black lettering and 12 foot FF energy absorbers have a black background with white lettering. And the idea here is that from a distance a worker, competent person or anybody for that matter can tell at a very quick glance is what energy absorber is being used. And on that label, there has to be the user capacity of 130 to 310 pounds, the free fall distance, average arresting force, and the deployment distance of the energy absorber. As you can see, 6 foot FF energy absorbers have a maximum free fall distance of 6 feet, an averaging arresting force of 900 pounds, and a maximum deployment distance of 4 feet or 48 inches. 12 foot FF energy absorbers have a maximum free fall distance of 12 feet, an average arresting force of 1,350 pounds and a maximum deployment distance of 60 inches. So that's one of the greatest advantages to the Z359.13 standard is although 12 foot energy absorbers have existed for many years, they never had a consistent nationally recognized testing protocol and manufacturing guidelines. So now there are. Gravitec Systems, however, would strongly recommend that you always use a qualified person when you're dealing with a 12-foot free fall situation to make sure that other forms of fall protection are infeasible. It is undesirable to have somebody falling that, that great a distance because contact with the structure and clearance issues may come into play. So now that we understand energy absorbers, let's take a look at the two different families of energy absorbing lanyards. Lanyards can be broken down into one of two types, single leg lanyards or double leg lanyards. Double leg lanyards are becoming you know, very popular because they offer workers a, a freedom of movement. Single leg lanyards can be limiting. Once I connect that lanyard to an anchor point, the worker can maybe move four or five feet in any direction. If they need greater range of movement, they end up disconnecting, to, so now they're either unprotected or they have to use another lanyard or another fall arrest system. So why lanyards, or double leg lanyards, offer the worker the freedom of the range of movement? They're characterized by two legs of a lanyard coming down to a common snap hook. Now in that Z359.13 standard, why lanyards are finally recognized. Up until 2007, why lanyards didn't have any testing requirements or manufacturing requirements. So again, this is one of the great advantages of, of keeping your equipment new, keeping your equipment current. There's a couple of issues with Y lanyards, however. Once a worker connects the, the one lanyard to an anchor point, connects the other to another anchor point, they can move by alternating these connections. So under normal use, many times both legs of these lanyards are connected. So how is that going to affect the lanyard if a worker should fall when both legs of those lanyards are connected? 
if you're using a Y lanyard that employs two energy absorbers coming to a single snap hook, there are a situation where you're dealing with what's called dual connection issues. If a worker should fall, there is the chance that you're trying to deploy two shock absorbers in a single event. In this situation, arrest forces are going to go higher, the uh, deceleration distance is going to decrease, and the advertised forces on these lanyards are going to, going to be higher. So a six foot FF energy absorbing lanyard that has an average of 900 pounds, since you're trying to deploy two at one time, you might see a, a, a force you know, in the 15 or 1600 pound range. If you have a, a, a force two or a, a 12 foot FF energy absorber, you may see forces closer to the 1800 pounds. Now ANSI does have a test for dual connections and they state that the maximum resting force can go over 1800 pounds but again, it's an undesirable situation to have those higher forces. So the way around the dual connection issue is to use a to specify a lanyard that's just got a single energy absorber. So even if both lanyard legs are connected, there's only one shock absorber in the system that's going to deploy. Now this isn't the solve all because this also introduces or may introduce the issue of, of hip loading. When workers use Y lanyards, the unused leg of the lanyard is often stored on the D-ring on the hip or onto the chest strap of the harness. If a worker falls when that lanyard is stored in that situation, the lanyard leg that's connected to the harness may prematurely stop the deployment of the energy absorber. Again, deployment distances of the energy absorber decrease, impact forces increase, and the person's body is loaded sideways or forward depending on where this lanyard is connected. The solution to this, the easiest solution, is using a harness breakaway. And that's a little tag on the harness or, or a, a manufactured loop where the lanyard is stored. So if that lanyard comes under tension during a fall, it just merely breaks away from the harness and allows the shock absorber to fully deploy. So in summary, like any piece of fall protection equipment, you have to understand your application and use the energy absorbing lanyard properly. Make sure you specify the right energy absorber, the right lanyard, and train people to be aware of anchor locations, free fall distances, hip loading, and dual connection problems. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions regarding fall protection training, engineering, consulting, equipment, or testing, feel free to contact Gravitech Systems through our website at www.gravitech.com or call us directly at 800-755-8455.